Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. The first thing I wanted to show you today um, is um, this from XRP Lighting the Way, at X Lighting the Way. Um, I, I talked earlier this morning about something else having to do with Hobi, and, and again, I don't know if I'm butchering that name, it's quite possible. But Hobi, um, this, this is an article, I'm not going to go into the article on Coindesk, but you can go and see it at Coindesk. Basically, they've announced that they're not just coming into the United States, but they're launching an institutional group for over-the-counter trading. And so now they're going after big investors here in the United States. This is big because this is one of the this is one of the first companies and one of the largest companies in crypto. And so to see them expanding like that is a big deal. Um, let's move along. This was sent to me from X Men XRP at XRP33 sent me this this is interesting because this is uh this is an article about f fidelity uh 2.46 trillion asset manager fidelity packed with hundreds of rabid bitcoin fans and what this article is about more or less is really just how enthusiastic fidelity is about the digital asset space but i just wanted you to see this one quote down here that really gives you an indication of what's going on at fidelity Fidelity's cryptocurrency culture is bonkers. Literally hundreds of passionate advocates at every level of seniority at the firm. They have more people working on crypto than the five biggest crypto funds combined. Their approach to custody from a security perspective is very impressive, at least from my relatively quick look. Not many groups actively mitigating things like HSM supply chain risk. Um, that, so more or less, this entire article is about just how huge digital assets are with Fidelity, which is one of the largest companies in finance in the world. That can only mean good things for the future of what we're invested in. Um, okay, now this is from C3 Nick, and uh, what this is is in regards to what I talked about this morning. Boris Stugart um, is the second largest stock exchange in, in Germany had uh, announced that they were doing a joint venture with this Axel Springer. Well, C3 Nick is from Germany, and he added this to it. Really, this part right here is the part I didn't know the answer to this morning. Fan, Finanzen Net, Net GmbH offers a large portfolio of online portals and mobile offerings to more than 3.47 million unique users. So this Axel Springer brings these platforms with this 3.47 million users to that combined with Boris Stuttgart. That's how they're going to really ramp up this retail uh, investment in digital assets. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, it's nice to have people from all over the world that can help us to uh, figure all this out. Um, this is from Michael Arrington. Um, remember, Michael Arrington started Arrington XRP Capital, which was the first XRP um, hedge fund denominator, where they or first hedge fund that used XRP for the movement of funds. Today he announced, and I'm not going into the to the announcement other than to say that they have just merged with Bite Size Capital, and um, Bite Size Capital. Well, actually, I'll take you to the article long enough to tell you one thing that I saw in the article. Um, Bite Size Capital is a private fund and research house focused exclusively on cryptocurrency. Now, this I find this part interesting. A research house does that mean that they're going to put out research reports on digital assets? Not sure yet, but we'll find out. Um, okay, and next from Stephen Dia. Wow, now this right here is huge, folks. I want you to look at this really closely because I've said. I've said this before. I've compared this before. Now, this represents the internet when, when the creation of the internet. This represents digital assets. Remember HTTP and SMTP? 
what it did is it allowed a, a, someone with an AOL email address to send an email to someone with a CompuServe email address or someone with a Genie email address. It made email interactive. And so that's what, that's what uh, Ripple and XRP represents to me. When I think of this, I think of this as the HTTP and SMTP for money, whereas this was for the sending of information, HTTP and SMTP. Now, this is the protocol for the sending of money. That is what Ripple's been working on. That's why this is so huge. If you can imagine, these are different platforms like PayPal and Alipay, M-Pesa, just like CompuServe and AOL were different email. They were different uh, platforms for people to have email and then they could send them to each other. Well, think of Ripple and XRP the same way. And that's just how huge all this is, folks. All right. Next, um, I just thought this was interesting every once in a while, um, especially in the bear market. It's, it's nice to think in terms of this so that really puts things in perspective. This is from XRP Goku at XRP Cyan. Everyone, if XRP does the same 38,000% increase it did in 2017, it will easily hit above $1,000 levels. Don't believe me? Um, the, he's talking about 38,000% off of the, the previous high, which was 344. But I want to make one, one point here in talking about this, and that is that with, XRP went up 38,000%. We, we didn't have even close to the positive things that have gone on over the last year. We didn't, even, we didn't have even close to the positive things going on that, that, that we do now back then. And it went up 38,000%. That's fact. Okay. Now I'm not sitting here and, and telling you that it's going to go up another 38,000%. But what I am telling you is it went up 38,000% without the, without most of the things that we have going for us now, without most of the partnerships, without most of the on-ramps, without the liquidity that we have now, not even close when it went up 38,000%. Okay, moving along. This is from Panda Ripple XRP, at Ripple Panda XRP. David Schwartz, David Schwartz introducing and explain how XRapid works. Um, Go watch this. This is an interesting. This is interesting to watch. It's very short, a couple of minutes, but um, this explains for those of you that haven't seen it. Shows you exactly. He talks exactly how X Rapid works. Um, next, this was the the blog from from Hoder today. Um, it's called. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, go to xrpcommunity.blog, and that's where you can you can read it. xrpcommunity.blog. Um, I just want to draw your draw your attention to the XRP torch portion. Sean Schaefer had started the torch going, the XRP torch, and what this was, and he started it uh, and sent it to James Malpass, and he sent one XRP to James Malpass, and the idea is that you add one more XRP when you receive it and you send it to the next person. Well, the, um, Hoder did a good summary of how this torch has gone. This was taken from the Bitcoin community, this idea. We wanted to show them how it was done. And so you can see a list. Hoder has summarized. He's shown you a list of some of the people that this has been through so far. And it got to Bob Way. Um, and I'm going to talk about Bob Way in a second. <clears throat> but anyway, I just wanted to show you that, that this torch is going. We're, we're going to see how far we can get this thing passed. Um, next, let's see here. This is from the Daily Hodel on their Twitter feed. New Bitcoin price model predicts BTC at $55,000. Um, I just wanted to show you this briefly. It's kind of interesting. A crypto analyst known as in the industry as Plan B just released a new prediction model that indicates Bitcoin will hit 55,000 in 2020 or 2021. The model analyzes the potential impact of Bitcoin's coming halving which will cut the block reward given to miners in half and further slow the production of Bitcoin's finite supply, which is capped at 21 million BTC. Havings have historically had a positive impact on the price of Bitcoin 
And according to plan B, the increased scarcity will once again drive value. I'm not going to go any further than that, but I just thought it was interesting that they said that. Um, next, this was announced today from Ledger. Ledger uh, and Emergio are thrilled to announce that the Car Cardano app is now available for Ledger Nano S. You can now store ADA, which, for, which is uh, Cardano's symbol. You can store uh, ADA on your Ledger Nano S and keep it safe and get it off the exchanges. Um, that is huge news. If you haven't gotten your Ledger Nano S yet, go into the description of all of my videos and you can get one. Finally, I wanted to address this. Um, I think Alex Cobb is still doing his live stream with Bob Way. Remember, Bob Way was one of the first 10, 10 employees at Ripple. There's two things that I take away from listening to Bob Way. The first thing is that everything that I had, have ever thought since I discovered Ripple and discovered XRP, all of the, the hopes and dreams and the, um, the thought pattern that I had when I first discovered Ripple all the way until today, which was that if adoption happens like it could happen, and if banks accept, accept XRP and Ripple software the way that they could, this could be every bit as big as I thought it was going to be. And this guy has never said anything that I've listened to that has made me think that I was wrong or could have been wrong on any part of that. Everything that I've heard him say, he's not trying to pump up XRP or anything, but everything I've heard him say leaves the door open to all of my greatest dreams having to do with Ripple and XRP. He hasn't said anything that leads me to believe that I could have been wrong on any portion of that if adoption occurs like it could. The second point I wanted to make was one thing that he said is that back, and I don't remember the year that he used, I want to say he was talking about 2013, 2014. I've told you many times that I was invested in XRP back then, and I was. And I've to also told you many times how, you, if you think that the market makes you nervous now, imagine back in 2013, we weren't worried about when we were going to come out of a, a, book, a bear market. We were worried about if, Today is the day that it's declared to be illegal to even own XRP, thus just completely decimating the price. That's where, where it was back then. But he said something in this stream that I thought was very interesting. And that is, he said that at Ripple, he, he said he was working remotely out of Texas, I believe. But he said the people that worked at Ripple during that time, were lit, they literally spoke in terms of would today be the day that we got our door kicked in and we all get sent to jail. That's what it felt like for them back then. And that's an amazing thing to really think about. And he said, just knowing how far we've come and how now we are literally at a place where banks are actually listening and talking about the use of Ripple and potentially down the road XRP that we're at that place now. The, and, and the reason I bring all of that up to all of you that are listening to me is because you just don't understand the opportunity that you are sitting on top of now versus the fear versus the, the, the feeling that we had back then in 2000, say 13 for myself. We are so far. It's, it's already known. It's a given. This is going to happen now. And this is the thing that people don't realize that are, that just started investing in 2017, for example. The feeling that we had back then was, is this going to happen? The feeling we have now, or at least I have. And I, the reason many people ask me, what, how can you be so confident? The reason I can be so confident is because I know what it was like then versus where we are today. Where we are today is Fidelity and the New York Stock Exchange. They're not saying they might come in. They're not saying they don't know how they feel about cryptocurrencies like they were back in 2013. They're spending hundreds of millions of dollars and are telling you that they're coming. That's been the whole theme of my channel since I began this channel. We are in a completely different dynamic now than we were. Now it's just a matter of when. And I say it all the time and I'll keep saying it. Now it's just a matter of when. Then it was a matter of if. And it wasn't just a matter of if. It was, is tomorrow my investment going to be declared illegal? 
and all of a sudden, poof, gone. And I have to go tell my wife, sorry, lost all the money. That's where we were back then. We are not there now. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family to go listen to Alex Cobb's uh, interview with Bob Way. Thank you for listening.